Chapter 5. Droppings. Zoe trudged even more reluctantly than usual to school the next morning. Ginger Nut was dead, and with that her dreams had died too. As Zoe walked out of the estate, Tina flobbed on the little girl's head as she always did. As she was wiping the flob out of her frizzy hair with a page ripped from one of her exercise books, Zoe saw Dad crouched over by the tiniest patch of grass. He appeared to be digging with his hands. He turned around quickly, as if in shock. Oh, hello, my love. What are you doing? said Zoe. She leaned over him to see what he was up to and saw that the little package containing ginger nut was laid on the ground next to a small mound of earth. Don't tell your mum. Step mum. Don't tell your stepmum, but I fished the little fella out of the bin. Oh, Dad. Sheila's still asleep, snoring away. I don't think she heard anything. Ginger Nut meant so much to you, and I, I just wanted him... I just wanted to give him, you know, a proper burial. Zoe smiled for a moment, but somehow she found herself crying too. Oh, Dad. Thank you so much. No word of this to her, though, or she'll murder me. Of course not. Zoe knelt down beside him, picked up the little package and lowered Ginger Nut into the small hole her father had dug. I even got one of these for a headstone, one of the old lolly sticks from the factory. Zoe took out her chewed biro from her pocket and scribbled, ginger nut on the stick. Though there wasn't really room for the tea, so it just read, ginger nut. Dad filled in the hole and they stood back and looked at the little grave. Thanks, Dad. You're the best. Now Dad was crying. What's the matter? asked Zoe. I'm not the best. I'm so sorry, Zoe. But I will get another job one day. I know I will. Dad, a job doesn't matter. I just want you to be happy. I don't want you to see me like this. Dad started walking away. Zoe pulled on his arm, but he shook it out of her grasp and walked off back to the tower block. Well, come and meet me at the school gates later, Dad. We can go to the park and you can put me on your shoulders. I used to love that. It don't cost a thing. Sorry, I'll, I'll be in the pub. Have a good day at school, he shouted without looking back. He was hiding his sadness from his daughter like he always did. Zoe could feel her stomach screaming in hunger. There had been no dinner last night as Sheila had spent all the benefit money on fags and there was no food in the house. Zoe hadn't eaten for a very long time. So she stopped off at Raj's newsagent. All the kids from school went to his shop before or after school. As Zoe never received pocket money, she would only come into the shop and gaze longingly at the sweets. Being exceptionally kind-hearted, Raj often took pity on the girl and gave her free ones. Only the out-of-date ones though, or those with a hint of mould, but she was still grateful. Sometimes she would be allowed a quick suck on a mint before Raj asked her to spit it out so he could put it back in the packet to sell it to another customer. This morning, Zoe was especially hungry and was hoping Raj would help. Ting, went the bell as the door opened. Ah, Miss Zoe, my favorite customer. Raj was a big, jolly man who always had a smile on his face, even if you told him his shop was on fire. Hello, Raj, said Zoe sheepishly. I don't have any money again today, I'm afraid. Not a penny? Nothing, sorry. Oh dear, but you do look hungry. A quick nibble on one of those chocolate bars, perhaps. He picked up a bar and unwrapped it for her. Just try and eat around the edge, please. Then I can put it in the wrapper and back on sale. The next customer will never know. Zoe nibbled greedily on the chocolate bar, her front teeth munching off the edges like a little rodent. You look very sad, child, said Raj. 
He was always good at spotting when things were wrong and could be a lot more caring than some parents or teachers. Have you been crying? Zoe looked up from her nibbling for a moment, her eyes still stung with tears. No, I'm fine, Raj, just hungry. No, Miss Zoe, I can see something is wrong. He leaned on the counter and smiled supportively at her. Zoe took a deep breath. My hamster died. Oh, Miss Zoe, I'm so sorry. Thank you, you poor thing. A few years ago I had a pet tadpole and it died, so I know how you feel. Zoe looked surprised. A pet tadpole? She had never heard of anyone having one as a pet. Yes, I called him Poppadon. One night I left him swimming, swimming around in his little fishbowl, and when I woke up in the morning, there was this naughty frog there. He must have eaten Poppadon. Zoe couldn't quite believe what she was hearing. Raj? Yes? The news agent wiped a tear from his eye with the sleeve of his cardigan. Sorry, I always get quite emotional when I think about Poppadon. Raj, tadpoles turn into frogs. <laughs> Don't be so stupid, child. They do. So that frog was Poppadon. I know you are just making me feel better, but I know it's not true. Zoe rolled her eyes. Now tell me about your hamster. He is, I mean, he, he was so special. I trained him to breakdance. Wow. What was his name? Gingernut, said Zoe sadly. My dream was that one day he would be on the TV. Raj thought for a moment and then looked Zoe straight in the eyes. You must never give up on your dreams, young lady. But Ginger Nut is dead. But your dream doesn't need to die. Dreams never die. If you can train a hamster to break dance, Miss Zoe, just imagine what you could do. I suppose. Raj looked at his watch. Uh, but as much as I would like to, we can't stand here chatting all day. No? Zoe loved Raj. Even if he didn't know a tadpole turned into a frog and never wanted to leave his messy little shop. You better be off to school now, young lady. You don't want to be late. I suppose so, mumbled Zoe. Sometimes she wondered why she didn't just bunk off like so many of the others. Raj beckoned with his big hands. Now, Miss Zoe, give me the chocolate bar, please, so I can put it back on sale. Zoe looked at her hands. It had gone. She was so hungry, she must have devoured every last morsel, save for one tiny square. I'm so sorry, Raj. I didn't mean to. I really didn't. I know, I know, said the kindly man. Just put it back in the wrapper. I can sell it as a special diet chocolate to someone fat like me. Good idea, said the little girl. Zoe went over to the door and turned around to face the newsagent. Thank you. By the way, not just for the chocolate, but for the advice. Both are free of charge for you any time, Miss Zoe. Now run along. Raj's words went round and round in Zoe's mind all day at school. But when she returned home to the flat, she felt the same sense of absence. Ginger Nut was gone, forever. Days went by, then weeks, then months. She could never forget about Ginger Nut. He was such a special little hamster, and he brought her so much joy in a world of pain. From the moment he died, Zoe felt as if she was walking through a storm, very slowly, as the days and weeks passed. The rain became a little lighter, though the sun had still not shone. Until one night, months later, when something completely unexpected happened. Zoe was lying in bed after another insufferable day at school at the hands of the bullies and the dreaded Tina Trotz in particular. There was shouting from next door as usual. Then, out of a brief moment of quiet in the night, came a tiny sound. It was so soft at first, it was almost imperceptible. Then it became louder and louder sounded like nibbling. 
Am I dreaming? thought Zoe. Am I having one of those strange dreams that I am lying in bed awake? She opened her eyes. No, she wasn't dreaming. Something small was moving in her bedroom. For a mad moment, Zoe wondered if it could be the ghost of Ginger Nut. Lately, she found a couple of what seemed like droppings in her room. No, don't be crazy, she told herself. Must be funny shaped clumps of dust, that's all. At first, all she could see was a tiny shadowy shape in the corner by the door. She tiptoed out of bed to have a closer look. It was little and dirty and a tad smelly. The dusty floorboards creaked a little under her weight. The tiny thing turned around. It was a rat.